Hey everyone, it's Tenrec back with another dive into the tech files. Tonight I'm with Zeke. Zeke, it's great to have you. I'm Zeke. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, tell everyone who you are, where you're from, what team you're on, what games you play, and what you do for tech. Oh, that was a lot. You can, you got to dumb it down for a little bit for me. Okay, okay. okay. We'll take it step by step. We'll take it step, step by step. Please, step. Please, okay. please, please. What's your name, Zeke? You just said it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously, guys. My name is Zach, a.k.a. Zeke Yingling. Uh, Zachary Yingling. Actually, my first name is Zachary Robert. That's a big thing about me. Um. Pretty much, I have two first names. I have four names in total. My middle name is Lewis. Uh, there's my whole government out there for y'all. But to go on where I'm from, I am actually from Johnstown, Pennsylvania. You know, it's a small city. It has a lot of history behind it. So I'm kind of proud of where I'm from, unlike a lot of people in this area. But uh, that's kind of where tech is from, though. So that's another thing you should know about. Sweet. And so I, I figured due to that you're on the steel or are you on a team at all i forget um i kind of hopped around for a little bit just messing around but i never really like took the league seriously because initially we came from the american esports side of things and i played on the 2k team there uh, i was a point guard and that's how i met seth and all that he actually did my interviews but that's johnstown steel that was the og team that's the team that branched off into all these other teams then, you know, I took over a few teams. I took over Armada, Erie Isles, Altoona Steam, kind of being AGMs there, helping Brian run the operation side of things. Uh, but before we go even to that, I played Rock. I eventually switched over to Rocket League, which is the main game I play now. Uh, I was the captain there when we became the eSports company with Timmy, uh, who is still at Johnstown Steel, I believe. Then, you know, next thing I know, I went to Armada. I kind of just stuck around as an AGM there. I ended up playing CDL for the Erie Isles after I left. Uh, then I played a little bit of CDL this season, actually, for the Armada, and we lost in semis. Took a big L. <laughs> Again, we I don't think even you know everything you do for tech, but give us a light overview. Um, You, you can pretty much just say I'm operations. Uh, I, I, I'm in director's position higher up position, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but right now what I do is kind of help oversee with Brian, with the high school league, the amateur league itself. I help an assistant production, graphic design. I even try to help out with social media when I can. I'm kind of have my hands in all the departments as much as possible just to really help out and kind of make sure things are running smoothly. But I did start off as the director of production. Actually, I started off as the manager of production uh, back in at the end of season one, kind of like halfway through, uh, we were, you know, Seth was doing so many things at once and I was hosting these Rocket League tournaments that people were in tech were. It was just two's tournament. Uh, and he saw I kind of knew the bare basics about running this stream. Then I learned more from Coop, who was kind of like he was my mentor to begin with. So when you see Coop in the tech files, he, he is the guy that showed me a rose. He was in staff before me. He showed me how things were done. He showed me a lot about OBS Studio, Streamlabs, all that stuff. Uh, I wouldn't know half the things I do now if it wasn't for him teaching me these things. And then, um, you know, all season two, I, I grinded out <laughs> six days a week for about four weeks straight. So then a kid came along named Plug who, who took over League of Legends. And then it was just five days a week streaming every day, setting up the streams, helping with graphics. And, you know, the graphic team was quite small. So I was literally in contact with Andy Specs every day and i will never forget it man this this is one of the most creative skilled people i know in graphic design but he cannot spell to save his life literally I, like i i like it came to a custom where i literally had to message him about something and i was like hey is this up don't forget this is how you spell this so um <laughs> calling him out a little bit yeah but you know friendly banter of course but that and that's another thing with production and how much stuff goes into it but I wouldn't be able to do half the things I've ever done here if it wasn't for the people around me. But director of production is where I started, and now I just kind of have my hand in everyone's pocket, in a sense, if that makes any sense. Can you tell me what hobbies you have outside of tech? Uh, hobbies outside of tech, I actually used to play for a semi-pro team. I actually, semi-pro football team, I actually stepped down because uh, tech is starting to grow so fast and it's getting so busy. And this is kind of like where my commitment is now. Um, I, I do work out a lot. I try to. I got pretty big. I was on a lifting team in high school. I played baseball in high school for varsity. I was a pitcher and second baseman, third baseman. Um, 
I wrestled, uh, but the hobby's not. It's just kind of like, you know, if I have free time, I like to play the games. I try to stream when I can. I uh, like to go hang out with friends. And since I'm 21 now, you know, I, I like to have a few beers in me here and there, of course. But, you know, kind of enjoy my age, especially in these tough times with COVID. But, you know, I, I'm a pretty laid back and natural person. I, I, I don't do any special, any special, anything special, excuse me, or anything spectacular. I'm not like a rock climber or anything like that. I'm, I'm a pretty basic person at the end of the day. Awesome. Um, so you've already gone through a, a solid amount of, of your time here at Tech as both a player and an operator, but can you tell me more about the, the humble beginnings? Like the, your, your part of the story and the separation from the previous organization and your part that you played in the, upgre- uh, the upbringing and, and nurturing of Tech? Um, I like to think I do have a big part in this, but again, at the end of the day, this is a team with a that started off very few and turned out to be very many now as you can see yourself but you know when we kind of branched out from american esports even back then i was like when we had the center in johnstown up in the gallery mall here in richland uh i was begging Seth that i wanted to work actually i just wanted to do something because you know i had a really good job it paid really well but it wasn't something i wanted to do i was traveling the country i was building ice rinks making great money like i said but it was it wasn't for me. It wasn't my lifestyle. I came from construction. I have degree degrees in plumbing, electrician, uh, masonry, all of it, carpentry, you name it. I, I've done it all, and you know I, I helped manage multi million dollar sites. But it, it wasn't really what I wanted to be, and I never thought this was kind of like where I thought my path would take down. So when we went off American Esports, I finally got reached out by Brian, uh, helping like structured the rocket league system behind it here in tech the next thing i know i got seth asking if i want to be a production manager uh you know i kind of just took the step i became part of staff i let go of my captain position and one thing left after another i kept trying to prove myself that i could do more and you know it eventually got to where i'm at where quote unquote i'm you know third or whatever uh and you know title at the end of the days i never cared about what my title was as long as you know people respected me and respected what i did and, and if they didn't, they didn't. As long as I could do my part of the deal, I was content with what I was doing. I was happy. Right. I mean, uh, I I absolutely know after, you know, being able to speak to you as many times as I've gotten to and, and talking to everybody else about you, that you have taken leap after leap after leap when it comes to, you know, how often you've been here and how, how many times you've taken risks with the company. Um, and so, you know, with those jumps as as you made your way up the ladder that was still being formed that was the staff how would you say you manage your responsibilities now me personally i'm i like to be very communical uh i like to be funny and joke around a lot but when it came to my responsibilities here i, I try to be very responsible I, I try to take everything as serious as possible but at the end of the day i, I will say anything childish when i get the chance to <laughs> uh, i'm just a childish <laughs> i'm not very collective all the time when I'm, I'm nervous right now i swear i'm usually not like this but i am you're okay man but you're doing uh, so good thank you but my responsibilities at the end of the day is just to make sure everything's going and if it wasn't for brian uh, Mikiko and Tom Mason really taking me under their wings. Uh, Brian is one of the most intellectual people I've ever met. Tom is one of the most scrabby businessmen I ever met. It's Seth's father. Uh, and to be under someone like that with so much knowledge, with so much that someone sees so much potential in you and what you can be, it's actually like you don't want to mess it up. You don't want to screw anything up. And I, I've had plenty of screw ups. I've had people hate me from left to right. Uh, it is cutthroat at the end of the day because at the end of the day, we do come down to being a business and we want to be a very legitimate business at that. So I, I try to do everything I can. And if I don't, I don't. Uh, if it backfires, so be it. I'm going to do everything I can. Right. I mean, I, I, I definitely know that you're definitely one of the bigger personalities when it comes to tech. Um, so uh, as as you obviously know, uh, everyone in tech, including myself, had to go through an orientation process as uh, you know we made our way into the eSport company. My orientation process was certainly a rushed one since I came with the Reddit post, but I heard through the grapevine, aka the two other people who are in this call who are managing the interview, that you have a good story about your orientation. So please. Uh, so... Uh, now, traditionally, people, when they go through orientation, there's 20, 30 plus people. And in, in your case, you I think you had like 80 in yours. I, yeah, I think I had like almost 100 people in the one call. Yeah, I think the most we ever had was like 120 in one call. We actually had a up. We couldn't put a cap on it because it was so big. And we actually had to ask some people to split it up. But uh, my orientation was just me, 
Seth and my best friend, Eddie. Um, and I found out through all this through one of my best friends, Robert. Um, we call him Robbie, Rob, Keg, whatever. Uh, I found out through him and we love playing 2K. We love being competitive. We love playing the pro-am scene. So next thing I know is uh, he tells me about it. He tells me to download Discord. I was like, man, I hate Discord. Last time I used Discord was trying to get Pokeballs. So I, I downloaded it again. <laughs> And um, I, I tell him my Discord name and everything. I join a random server. I don't even know if I joined a server. I think I gave him my numbers, and we were in a private call. And I was sitting in Hammond, Indiana, because, like I said, with my old job, I traveled the country a lot. So I was, you know, 45 minutes away from Chicago, Illinois. <clears throat> and um, I'm sitting in the hotel bathroom getting my – I'm just sitting on the tub. It was literally right after work. I was – sweaty drenched in dirt you know just my shirt was stained with flux all this stuff uh it, it was just a hard day at work and everything you know i'm getting a call about like you know there's a lot of potential and opportunity here you know we want to get you going against other teams competing you in tournaments you know i, I end up joining the 2k team i tried out and one thing our 2k team was really big too so i never got to see a lot of playing time because there was this one kid mamba who was actually really good uh he wasn't pro amateur in my opinion but he was a great park player he had a good youtube channel um he actually beat some really big names in park so uh, i sat in that orientation and it was kind of almost similar to the one we run now kind of just telling the beliefs and what we want to do uh you know the whole vision behind it he, he just he talked that that man seth can talk talk Talk, talk, <laughs> talk, talk. So I, I think it. I think it actually lasted about an hour and a half, maybe even two hours, because we were just. I had questions too. I was curious about it, I didn't, and a lot of people are skeptical about it. You know, I, I wasn't so much ske sketched out about it because my friend Rob was already with it, um, and they told me there was a sign. I was like, I'm about to get signed. What? Yeah, I was literally sitting in the bathroom, man, and I remember muting it, and I, I walk out of the bathroom and everything, and my my friend Eddie just has his shirt off, just laying in a hotel bed looking at me, and I swear he was about falling asleep because of how much Seth was talking. Uh, I just started making myself a Hot Pocket, just enjoying what he was saying. So um, it, it was it's definitely different. Apparently, I have a really <laughs> cool orientation story uh, through the grapevine, you said. But um, yeah, so I, I was literally sitting in a hotel bathroom in Hammond, Indiana certainly far out in any circumstance whether that be personnel or location definitely <laughs> definitely a different start than most people i would say you know we've, we've talked about your staff positioning a lot um already but uh i i want to talk a bit more about the hands-on approaches that that people know you for um you know you're you're definitely very present in streams uh but what a lot of people i know don't know is that you tend to be the sole spectator sole moderator and sole streamer of most of the streams that you watch over. And I know it's a, like a super exasperating job to have because you have to watch like three different tabs at once, manage so many different problems. How do you keep up with it all? Um, Coop, again, a person, <laughs> a person who is not like a lot of people. He has a mind that is so great. Uh, we, we crack on him all the time, make fun of him all the time. He's just, he, he has a different personality. He, he loves his steak tips. Let's just say that. But, uh, he, he structures like if like right now, if you guys don't know we're I'm actually watching the stream right now, he runs a lot of the streams too. Um, I try to, I only really run the rainbow six and overwatch and league of legends from time to time, but Coop has helped out tremendously. He kind of structured it and made it like very idiot proof for my case because i <laughs> i tend to mess it up a lot and i'm literally calling them but um just doing it for so long you know i i did it all of season two i did it for a good bit of season one i'm doing it for i started off in the first like two weeks of season three um so you know you kind of just get used to it uh it, it can be a little stressful here and there of course uh especially when you know you're starting to let the stream look bad because you're starting to like get distracted by other things and trying to make sure everything's set up but you know we also got rock who's director of production so he him going out making sure all the information is there for me that i have the players ready stuff like that especially with the commissioners now uh there's so many bits and pieces to this machine uh it, it helps out tremendously so i know where to go especially being so high up i know who's there so it's not like i have no excuse to not know where anyone's at and you you say i do all these things but i couldn't do all these things if i didn't like if i didn't have those other people without a doubt so, Zeke, you know, after all the steps that you've taken, after all of the people that you've watched, you know, enter your lives, uh, you know, after all of that, 
for the sake of 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 your own journey through tech, what's kept you going? Um, the people around me for sure, but a lot of people don't know. Uh, the biggest thing for me is I lost my brother two years ago on March seventeenth, two thousand nineteen. Uh, he actually, you know, he, he was a kid like everyone else. He partied and stuff, but I, it's that's all I can really say, I guess, for, you know, proper reasons. But um, I, I did lose my brother, and all my life it's just been me, my brother, my dad. You know, we were like the three musketeers. I fought with my brother constantly. Uh, I, I wore his clothes. I wore his shoes. He just has – he had the – he, he kind of put me on, and, you know, I, I still collect shoes because of him. Uh, that's kind of where all my money goes, but – uh, with losing him, you know, he was a big gamer. He loved 2K, and as I said before, um, that's kind of the game I signed up for, and I kept playing. He was actually, like, ranked top 30 in all of 2K for being a center, so he was really good. He had offers. Uh, he was one of the <clears throat> best snipers in Modern Warfare 2. Uh, he, he scrammed with an Optic, I think it was Optic Clan before, when they first started or something like that. I'm not too entirely sure. He might have been just lying, but I don't know. I knew he was really good <laughs> at the game at the end of the day and uh you know esports is like kind of what me and him connected through a lot other than just like baseball and you know clothes and shoes uh we used to play the game together a lot you know i would always ask him to get on park with me uh we would rank up together but um this is kind of like a way i get to be close to him a lot so you know having this and pushing through it's just like you know i'm doing something i love and something i connected really well with him with so this is kind of like this is, this is what keeps me going, honestly. Um, not just the people around me because uh, of him, because uh, of my dad, too. You know, he, he knows the struggles and hardships of startup companies. Uh, and, you know, just just being here gives me a sense of, like, pride and relief. And if this does grow to be what we want it to be, um, I'm, I'm going to go up. I'm going to go up to his grave. I'm going to slap a big old esport company on his sticker and see how offended he gets. Um, for you guys that don't know me and my brother, like I said, we fought a lot and, you know, we're very petty to one another. So next time I do see him, we're going to, we're going to have a good talk and, uh, it's going to, he's going to catch a power driver. I'm a, I'm a Batista <laughs> bomb, I'm for sure. But, uh, yeah, my, my brother is the number one reason out of all of this, why I, I even wake up in the morning without a doubt. I'm I'm super glad that you tend to, you know, stick with your team because I mean, as you've grown up with tech, you've you've gotten to see everyone blossom and to 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 be one of those roots, to be one of those cores, it's it's really nice to see you appreciate everyone surrounding you. Um but you you told me a lot about, you know, the different games that you've uh, dipped your toes into as time has gone on, you know, 2K, Rocket League, Overwatch, R6, all those and I, I know that a lot of the times when it comes to the esport company, those different gaming communities can be a bit separated from each other. So as someone who has had his eyes on a lot of the different factions of tech for some time now, uh, what do you think is, you know, a great factor that can really bring everyone together? Um at the end of the day, you're just part of the same work. And, you know, about bringing people together, you only can bring, bring people together that want to be brought together at the end of the day. Uh, so really trying to put your effort and energy into something that can't happen, just it won't. But, you know, if I had any advice to give just to bring those together, it's like uh, the quotations, you know, the biggest one of them all, it's a free league. Um, but with that being said, a lot of the other leagues aren't free. And when they're free, you know, it's a, it's a scam. They don't care. We're, we're different for sure. I, I know that at the end of the day, I see it firsthand. I go to the office here, the HQ that we have. I know everything that's going down. I know the future plans. And, you know, I tell people to be optimistic. And when I tell them that and, you know, I give them little bits and pieces and Seth does too, you know, we used to have this little thing called Lurk Gang. Uh, people were excited for it, but that kind of died off. People that miss out on us, you're missing out. I, get, I have at least 20 people a day message me asking how I can get back in. I'm sorry, stuff like this. And we and we love the community. We absolutely do. Um, but at the end of the day, you kind of need to weed those people out that don't want to be here, that find all the negatives. Because my biggest saying in life is, um, if you're really going to let the negatives weigh out the positives, then what are you doing? So to really bring people together is not the biggest thing I stress upon because I, I want people that want to be here to be here, not the ones that don't, not the ones that want to pick it apart. My final question to you, Zeke, 
as someone who has been on both sides, both as a newbie and now as as this, you know, gigantic mentor and leader of operations to anyone new to entering tech, looking to become a part of something they want to be a part of. What is your advice to them? Um, my, my main advice would probably be, you know, just if, if you really want to be a part of it, just say something. Uh, there's plenty of channels to reach out to. You have your AGMs, your GMs, commissioners, teammates. I'm always on the Discord. Uh, I try to be at least. I have my company email. Brian has his. There's a lot of people that can reach out to. And um, if you don't think tech is right for you, that's fine. I know it's right for me for my personal reasons. It, it kind of kept me going because uh, I had my fair share of traumatic experiences. And tech is kind of what like made me stay up and keep walking. Um, so I'll let that be said. But, you know, tech was my lifesaver for sure. And as cliche and cringy that sounds, it's it's the God honest truth to me. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight, Zeke. Are there any mm. socials or places where people can reach you that you want to shout out? Uh, um, I'm Zeke dot 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 hashtag six eight seven eight in Discord. I'm Zeke on Twitter, Z R L Y six on Instagram. Uh, my Snapchat. I don't think y'all deserve that just yet. <laughs> but um, I I try. Uh, if you really want to reach out to me, um, just find me in Discord or any of those socials. I have no problem saying what's up. And if I don't say what's up to you, then goodbye. Great. Well, thank you again for joining me tonight. And thank you all for watching another dive into the tech files. We'll see you next time. I'm Zeke. <laughs>